He's been in office for only half a year, but President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi is already showcasing Egypt's economic achievements. This video, released at the beginning of the month, shows the former military general inaugurating a number of army construction projects. And it's no wonder he's smiling. When Sisi took power, the economy was in a bad way. Double-digit inflation, high unemployment and a ballooning budget deficit. A recipe for unrest. But backed by pledges of more than $15 billion of aid from the Gulf, the president quickly moved to stabilize the economy. So let's look now at three key areas crucial to the success of Sisi's economic plan. The biggest and best known of Sisi's infrastructure projects is the new Suez Canal launched in August this year. Alongside widening and deepening of the original canal, a second 45-mile lane will be added to accommodate two-way traffic. Government officials say once completed, revenues from the canal will more than double to $12.5 billion a year. The $8 billion project has been financed through the sale of investment certificates, offering a 12% interest rate. 35-year-old Rasha Ezeldin bought nearly $3,000 worth. She said a sense of national pride swept the bank as scores queued up to buy the certificates. Let me tell you in one word, I felt hope. Um, I felt how much people love this country and wants to do something to the country. You know, I, I like to feel in the future uh, telling my children or uh, the new generation about it, that how I, I contributed and supported uh, my country. But despite the feel-good nature of the project, Others are questioning its economic feasibility. The, go the government said they will double the number of ships passing from 48 ships per day on average to around 97 ships per day, which is very big question marks about this. How can this happen uh, where you have an, uh, a global economy that is growing like 3-4% um, uh, in terms of global trade and even the global economy on average is even lower than that. When Sisi came to power, ramping up national security became a top priority. During the last three years, travel warnings over terrorism and political unrest saw holidaymakers stay away in droves. But despite continued militant activity in the Sinai, new data suggests that overall tightening of security could be paying off. Tourist arrivals have increased by nearly 70% in the third quarter of 2014, compared with the same period last year. But it's not just the tourism sector that's benefiting from a restored sense of law and order. Sharif El Sayyad runs a business which manufactures home appliances. During Egypt's political unrest, workers at his factory began challenging his authority. Just after the revolution, we had this general uh, feeling in the country that it's total chaos. Nobody is uh, it's there, police is not uh, existing anymore. Okay, so we felt like we are by our own. This feeling, of course, also was transferred for the workers who felt that uh, uh, there is no uh, order in the country, uh, total chaos, so they have to request whatever they want. Sometimes their uh, demands were not very logical, but we had to obey because, like I told you, we don't have someone to back us, uh, which is totally different from what's happening right now. Right now, uh, people feel that there is someone in control, someone responsible. They cannot have just empty demands uh, because they, they know that there will be punishment for this. Within a month of taking office, President Sisi risked his popularity by cutting fuel subsidies, widely seen as a lifeline for the poor. Spending on the scheme had ballooned to $15 billion a year, a fifth of Egypt's total budget. Nasef Sawiras is Egypt's richest businessman. He accrued his estimated $6 billion fortune through construction works. Despite hitting the costs of his companies, he welcomes the fuel subsidies reform. But he says there's another subsidy to tackle the propping up of Egypt's currency. The Egyptian pound has appreciated significantly against all emerging market currencies because it's been uh, pegged to the dollar. It's even uh, held at par with the euro. And that's not justifiable given uh, where we are today and where we want to go. And it's a huge subsidy to the rich. It's the rich that uh, travel abroad, that consume imported products, uh, so uh, it is another element of subsidy, so uh, I believe th uh, the first currency change has to be that the, the elimination of the black market and letting the Egyptian pound 
help the Egyptians create uh, competitive export industries and attract more FDI. And with the International Monetary Fund forecasting economic growth of 3.5% next year, the early prognosis of Sisi's economy is one of cautious optimism. But with rising poverty levels and crippling power shortages, Egypt's economy has a long way to go before it can shake off the shackles of its recent troubles.